Okay, y'all, Jason here, Kuyu South today. This is going to be part two of the Whitetail Deer Habitat Management Series, kind of a subtitle of Maximizing the Caring Capacity. And um, what I'm talking about on this Maximizing the Caring Capacity is we're going to take every square inch of the property and make it usable for something, whether it be nutrition or bedding. And one of the points I want to make today before I, I talk to you about this bush hog field behind me is down here in the south, Mississippi, Alabama, and some other places, we've got so many deer. And for years, we've had to shoot 20, 30 does, kind of the normal that a biologist, biologist will tell you. If you've got about a thousand acres, the norm, it's going to be 20 to 30 does you got to kill every year. And that's a chore. So over the years, we've kind of got off to ourselves and do what we want to do. Not saying anybody's wrong, but being our property, we like to kind of learn the hard way and do what we like to do and what works for us. And hopefully maybe some of this stuff will work for y'all. But what we've decided to do over the years, some of this came by accident and some, some of it just worked because we thought it would and got lucky. But what we want to do here is maximize the carrying capacity to where if you needed to, sh was supposed to shoot 25 does, let's make it an even number there. All right, well, if you can take a few spots and get more carrying capacity out of those few spots and not have to shoot but uh, 15 does versus 25, well, that's 15 more chance or 10 more chances that you're going to have of raising a monster buck because we all know they're all not going to be monsters. So the less does you have to shoot, the more chances you have to have that monster buck grow for whatever it might be on your piece of property. It might be a 120 inch deer. It might be a 180 inch deer. You'll learn that in time, but that's what we want to do and I, we get sick of shooting does because you mess around and you get into the rut and you hadn't killed all your does and you're trying to kill a big buck during the rut well we just decided we was going to try to find a way to get away from shooting all them does and, and as we get closer maybe even over into hunting season as i start getting some game trail pictures i'm going to show y'all some ways on bucks we're going to make this fun i'm going to show y'all how to shoot some deer some bucks maybe you can take out one or two certain call bucks we'll call them and even let more does go so we're gonna get into that a little deeper as we go but right now i'm gonna show you what i did with this winter food plot be right back okay i'm back i hope i hope y'all can see this feel pretty good sun's pretty bright today i hope the camera does pretty good but this is about an acre or so right here that we plant for a winter food plot, it just pretty much plant wheat right here. And you can see over here in the edge, this stuff is nearly up to my waist. But anyway, I came down here and cut this the other day. I, we're, we're like everybody else. Years ago, we used to just, when deer season was over, we let these things go till August, September, come in here and bush hog them and try to plow them. And this, this is kind of how this deal here came about. We used to bush hog them, and then we tried to come right behind it and plow, and it'd take you five or six passes to even get down to the dirt. So this has been years ago. I decided to start coming through the summer and clip them three or four times through the summer, which makes them shorter and shorter and tender, and all these rows right here, they'll go away as I start bush hogging it more. And so what that allows you to do when it's time to plow you come in here and hit it about two times section hair it and drill it and you're ready to go but as we started doing this i would come down here late in the evening during the summer and it's it's pretty much brown and dead right now but in a few weeks when i cut it again and we get a little rain it'll start greening up i started noticing the deer out here late in the evening grazing they'd be grazing right here and over in this where I didn't cut, wouldn't be anything there. So we figured out the tender stuff was popping back up 
and we was getting a little benefit. Didn't have clover or anything planted here, but we was getting some more benefit to raise that carrying capacity, and that's what this deal's all about. Besides saving on the tractor work, you do a little bit, cost a lot less to come in here than bush hog it than it does to come in here and plow it 20 times. Takes a little time, but it'll give you something to do through the summer. Okay, another benefit of these little fields, the, about three hours after I cut this the other day, I rode down here and right over here in this corner, it was five jakes. And I've seen that happen before and I got to thinking about it a little bit. Normally I'll bush hog this whole thing, but uh, I left it this time and in a future video, I'll tell you why I'm leaving that this time. But what I got to thinking about of course, there's a lot of bugs out here, and a turkey, he likes to be able to see. So they're out here bugging around in this acre, acre and a half field. Well, if somebody like me comes up or a coyote or something, he's got cover all the, all the way around him. He can shoot right out of the danger zone. So what I'm thinking, too, when these mama turkeys start having these babies, she can bring them out here on the edges, and if something comes along, a hawk, a hoot owl, or a coyote or whatever, She's got cover all the way around her. She can shoot them off in here and protect her baby. So that's just going to be another plus for this. All right, this is maximizing the carrying capacity. Appreciate y'all watching. Out of here.